Welcome to Nanoparticle Manufacturing, Strategies for De-Risking Early Clinical Manufacture. I'm Troy Pereira, Marketing Communications Associate here at Precision Nanosystems. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Ray Lockard, VP of Pharmaceutical Operations at Precision. Uh, Ray has spent over 20 years in the biotech industry, including nine years at El Nylum Pharmaceuticals. He joined El Nylum in 2005, and built and led the company's initial quality assurance function, and later held roles in the business development and supply chain. He is currently responsible for all large-scale and CGMP implementation of the Precision Nanosystems technology, including internal QMS development and pharmaceutical operations. Now, before we begin, some basic housekeeping. If you have technical issues, please use the question or chat box and we will do our best to troubleshoot. If you have any questions for our speakers, please use those same features and we will try to answer as many of them as possible at the end of the session. If we do not get to your question, we will answer them after the event via email. Now, without any further delay, Ray, take it away. Thanks, Troy. And thanks for, uh, to everyone for joining us today for our webinar, Nanoparticle Manufacturing, Strategies for De-Risking, early clinical manufacture. For today's agenda, uh, we'll review the nanoparticle process, um, including the risks in clinical the clinical development environment. The key elements that we'll cover today uh, for this risk assessment are an overall risk tolerance and strategy, process, the, the product contact materials, supply chain, quality management system, or QMS, uh, and we'll finish with a short discussion on validation. Traditional nanoparticle manufacturing processes typically involve complex material flows, multiple distinct steps, significant capital equipment requirements to achieve final product specification. These processes can provide considerable opportunity for failure or delays due to difficulty in controlling the process and the limited flexibility to scale to higher volumes. The capital equipment required may also have to be upgraded or replaced prior to progressing to the next scale, often having significant lead times for delivery and qualification. Managing risk during the development of these processes is critical in order to ensure successful manufacturing and enable the execution of the clinical development program. Today's webinar is intended to provide an overview of how to approach the risk management in this environment. Many companies are challenged with very aggressive clinical program timelines. This graphic shows a sample development timeline, including aggressive assumptions for completion of drug substance manufacturing and raw material sourcing. This webinar is focused around the manufacturer of the final drug product but the themes expressed here should also be applied to your API manufacturing and your novel excipient manufacturing, including any specific novel raw materials. Successful manufacturing of your nanoparticle process will likely be an important gating item to facilitate continued research and development of your drug candidate. Delays or failures during the development of your nanoparticle process will have a serious impact on downstream activities and overall business objectives. In order to execute on aggressive timelines involving these processes, teams must identify areas of highest risk or short-term focus. Defining and agreeing on corporate strategic risk tolerance must be a first step. Managing risk being a clinical phase appropriate strategy is also critical to provide effective compliance management which supports overall business objectives. Risk tolerance and strategy. Each organization must decide how it will manage risk it looks to enter the clinic, particularly with novel technologies and modalities. The entire team must be on the same page to execute effectively and collectively. The use of a defined matrix like the one pictured here can be very helpful to align cross-functional teams on the meaning and criticality of an, of an identified risk. The five specific areas of nanoparticle development that we'll cover in more detail, detail today are the process, including developing processes with as broad a range of specifications as possible to support potential research and development outcomes. We'll also talk about product contact materials, the components which interact with the process fluids and which are most critical to evaluate. 
the supply chain, which must be understood and evaluated for quality, reliability, and redundancy. We'll spend a bit of time talking about quality management systems, uh, including the initial quality system development, the timing for internalizing quality, and how the team should prioritize critical oversight systems. And finally, we'll spend a bit of time on validation, which will focus on a phase appropriate approach, critical to avoid unnecessary deployment of resources. Current novel technologies inherently involve additional platform risk. Often distinct regulatory compliance regulation and guidance typically follows initial commercial success of a particular technology and is not often available for early research and development. A focus on patient safety, known product quality attributes, and clinical development strategy will inform for the appropriate areas of immediate attention. Early phase development often affords potential to apply resources via a risk-based method. Trade-offs which are made in order to accelerate development must be tracked, however, and planned for execution in later phases. Examples of these trade-offs may occur in validation, in your extractables leachable studies, in your stability program, and in some of your supply chain decisions. For your nanoparticle development process, it's helpful to assume that initial projected volumes and specifications will likely change. Initial work on the process and on the program will likely commence without fully understanding dosing, efficacy, or therapeutic index. Developing broad potential manufacturing ranges will assist in this flexibility and for the program to move forward as quickly as possible. Evaluating and identifying risks across the entire process flow will be very important to assisting this flexibility in the manufacturing ranges. It is important not just to focus on the steps assumed to be challenging based on prior knowledge or assumptions in the actual process. Things like particle formation, downstream processing, dilution, and final aseptic steps should be evaluated to eliminate any potential surprises. Reducing potential process steps whenever possible and looking at alternatives to, pro to steps that can complicate uh, overall process development such as heating and lyophilization can also assist in simplifying the process development. Maintain a consistent view towards both particle quality and scalability of process variables. Ensure that stability and durability of particles is also assessed once initial specifications have been met. Now on to materials and components. Focus on potential product and process risk and balance with the business needs. Assign your criticality to enable efficient operational approach to each specific material and component involved with your process. Look at your product contact materials and try to utilize inert disposable materials whenever possible. Materials like stainless steel, peak, EPDM, platinum cured silicone are examples of materials that are often used in the pharmaceutical and biotech industry and have a well understood profile when it comes to processing schemes and extractables and leachables. Use single use items whenever possible to reduce risk and cost for things like cleaning validation, which can be very expensive and timely in processes that look to reuse components or fluid paths. Focus on compatibility testing to your process materials and your process conditions. Don't forget about high and low temperatures, different, different potential solvents, and additional processing requirements such as gamma radiation, autoclaving, or aseptic manufacturing. For extractables and leachables, any novel components in the system should be evaluated for any initial extractables, leachables, de-risking work that can be done to ensure that there will not be problems later. BSE TSE statements should be on file for all components entering the processing environment. This is looking for the availability of documentation 
to show that there were no animal derived components or process contact materials in the process flow. And this should be assessed during the initial de-risking analysis and component sourcing, as it will be a critical documentation element prior to entering the GMP arena. Looking to de-risk your supply chain early in R&D can simplify both processes and timelines at a later date. Focus on your suppliers with the most critical or novel components for your early activities. Success at the bench can be at risk if materials are inconsistent, of poor quality, or unavailable at later stages or in larger volumes. Leveraging contract manufacturing organizations or suppliers with experience in GMP manufacture will streamline your activities. Perform site audits for critical suppliers, which can include quality assurance and manufacturing team members to ensure that all elements of the manufacturing and compliance need are understood. Non-GMP supply may be okay for some components where paper documents like ISO certs or a site audit that has de-risked that particular vendor are in place. Develop your internal quality management system to oversee specifications, change control, and receipt and handling of your materials. Audit, confirm, and monitor the compliance of your external CMOs, partners, and, and suppliers through this quality management system. You may have to rely on contract manufacturing organizations or CMOs for some aspects of, the, of your quality management system. If this is necessary, make sure that you have documented quality agreements in place. You can manage your supply risk through inventory control, backup, slot, backup suppliers, et cetera. And for non-catalog custom items, supply agreements may be required, which spell out how certain items will be supplied and de-risked at the actual manufacturer. Your internal QMS should be designed to support phase appropriate manufacture. The level of compliance and oversight required for early phase one type activities is going to be quite different and less complex than for phase three and commercial products. Compliance requirements and therefore risk tolerance can depend on the actual clinical phase. Modular and flexible implementation is gonna be key to managing these early changes. Therefore, the QMS should be designed to support this phase appropriate manufacturer. This internal QMS can include your quality system procedures, supply chain management and oversight, any process development or early validation activities that are needed, internal training activities, and auditing of external suppliers and contract manufacturing organizations. Use of consultants may be okay early on in a company's life cycle, but having in-house resources which have firsthand history of decision-making and outcomes is often preferable. For validation, activities can prevent challenging timelines and costs if not managed appropriately. Again, for early stage development, many validation efforts can be postponed to later development. The use of single-use components may remove the need for things like cleaning process validation. Recording and document, documenting data in initial batch records can also eliminate the need for computer or process validation in early stages. The use of microfluidics in, in, in nanomedicine manufacturing looks to identify some of the risks discussed here today. Existing technologies can be very labor intensive, have high batch to batch variability, and are often, as mentioned, very difficult to scale. Implementing microfluidics from your bench top all the way through to your scale up activities presents an opportunity for very rapid and easy to use processes, very reproducible results, and seamless scale up from the milliliters to the multiple liters to tens of liters scale. The nano assembler scale up system, which is designed for use in the GMP manufacturing environment has looked to address many of the risks discussed here today. We use identical microfluidic mixers from our benchtop instrument and our blaze instrument all the way through to this scale up system. The, 
The formulation processes are therefore transferred directly from the benchtop and the blaze instruments. This modularity allows for a very wide range of manufacturing scales. The system utilizes a fully disposable fluid path as well as inert materials that are very familiar to the pharmaceutical and biotech space. We have BSC TSC statements available for all components in the wetted fluid path. Our internal QMS is designed to oversee our supply chain, the internal activities, the vendors and CMOs, as well as manage quality agreements with our customers. The GMP microfluidic mixers the process for manufacturing the GMP microfluidic mixers has been validated through the full PQ at our CMO, which is GMP experienced and ISO certified. This is intended to de-risk the most novel component in our system. We have also performed extractables leachables on the mixture material to further de-risk the potential for customer process solutions using our system. In conclusion, a defined risk strategy is critical to your effective process development and clinical program management into the IND. A phase appropriate approach will afford appropriate de-risking while supporting timelines and your overall business needs. Evaluating the process and supply chain risk early on will support a more streamlined development. And finally, developing and maintaining an internal quality management system will afford the proper awareness and oversight on the agreed risk strategy and provide a mechanism for issue resolution and corrective actions. I'd like to invite you to join us at some of the upcoming conferences listed here so that you can come and see the precision technology firsthand and visit with some of our representatives. Uh, thank you, Ray, for that wonderful webinar. Um, we do have time for a couple of questions before we sign off for today. Uh, the first one here, um, the timeline on slide seven uh, assumes that the process development is complete. Uh, how long would typical process development take and where might there be opportunities to reduce that time? Well, well thanks for that. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say that your typical nanoparticle development process, um, particularly using some of the existing technologies, can take up to six months or higher, um, maybe, maybe even up to a year, um, depending on availability of materials and the ability to scale effectively. Um, the, the use of easy to acquire materials and processes that can scale easily uh, can significantly reduce your times. So look, during your early development, look to uh, acquire elements in your supply chain that are easy to access, um, but also, and more importantly, um, I think, look at the processes that you're using and try to ad identify processes that will be easier, easy to scale once off the, once, once off the bench top. Thank you. Um, we do have time for one more question. Um, at what point should you consider implementing the de-risking elements mentioned here? Well, I, I think you need to be cognizant of things like material availability, compatibility, um, and, and relative stability of your materials as, as you perform your initial process development, uh, because they will impact uh, your material and your program all the way through its life cycle. But things like your quality management system, validation activities, um, things like extractable bleachable studies, those can often wait until you have uh, your candidate identified um, and the program is, is green lighted to move forward. Excellent. Um, I think that's all the time we have uh, for questions. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if we didn't get to your questions, we will answer them via email after the event. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to learn more about the Nano Assembler platform, uh, visit www.precisionnanosystems.com. Um, and don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, from Ray Lockard and myself, have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for your time. Cheers.